Hey, what's up, everybody? Bill Allen with Seven Figure Flipping, and I am going to answer the question that everybody's asking me. Should I take my economic injury disaster loan or not? So a lot of people are getting these loans now. Finally, they've gotten the advance. Now they're getting the loans for up to $150,000. That's the highest that I've seen so far in my world. And um, so they're asking me, what, do you, what did you do? And so I just want to answer it here. I want to answer what I did, why, and what I would recommend um, you guys do in your situation. So I'll talk about my situation a little bit where I was and then answer the question, should you take it or not? And hopefully it's a quick video. Um, the, so the, this idle program is designed to help with hardship, right? And it's, there's some specific things to use this loan for like payroll, for example, um, and some other costs that are inside your company. It's not supposed to be, or meant to be used to grow your business and increase your revenue. And it's meant to help you in a time of need. And the PPP was meant to do the same thing. So initially they were saying, uh, you can't use both. Did you expect one or the other? And then later they said, okay, well you actually can use one. You can use both. And, um, but you, you can't use them for the same type of things. So the first challenge that I'll give you is, did you get the PPP? And what are you using it for? And then what would you use this idle program for? So think about that first. And that's kind of where my, um, where my answer ran into. So uh, I'll give you my story. So it, I have a company called Blackjack Real Estate. We're wholesalers and house flippers. We are uh, active business. That company, I, when all this stuff happened, the CARES Act came out, I read it, I applied for IDLE. And then when the PPP program came out, I applied for PPP and in, in all the companies. I basically wanted to apply, then I'll make a decision of what I do. Um, we were awarded the PPP for both companies, Seven Figure Flipping and Blackjack Real Estate. So we've got, we got those loans. And then uh, this idle program was still taking forever, right? It was, it, was the, it was pretty much the thing that happened last in, for most of us. So, and some of you didn't get PPP and you're only getting idle. Or some of you got PPP, PPP and didn't apply for idle. So wherever you are, I think that matters. So um, we've, we got the PPP loan for both companies. So the Paycheck Protection Program for both companies. And um, so I, we've got that money in both companies now. So then what I, what I got an email from the SBA where we got the advance. So we got the $10,000 in our account for both companies. So that's gonna come off our uh, forgiveness of our Paycheck Protection Program. So when I fill out my Paycheck Protection Program um, forgiveness, which I just did a video and posted here about that too, if you wanna see it. but. I'll reduce that by $10,000 and that'll be my forgivable amount. So now I got an email uh, saying, go into your portal and Blackjack Real Estate, my real estate company was de de uh, denied the idle uh, program. So that loan, that economic injury disaster loan was denied. So it was denied on the, on the case and facts that um, it, it doesn't fit the small business association rules for a loan. So there, if you read the SBA guidelines of, who is eligible and ineligible, passive investors are ineligible. So rental property investors. So they, and they, they lump all these real estate investors together and it could have been the, what we file on our tax return, but I pay active income in that business. It's an active business, just like a, sh a shop, just like a store. I pay self-employment tax. So it's very clear that could be argued that that's, a, that's wrong. So some of our seven figure altitude members have, um, have appealed that and are in the process of getting their account reviewed. And if that's you, I would recommend you appeal that process too. And um, so if you got denied, I think that there's an argument to say that I'm an active business. And if you need this loan, then go out and, and appeal it and, and fight back and say, hey, if this is why you denied me or tell me why you denied me more clearly. So think about that. And then the other company, so I didn't ha really have a choice in my blackjack real estate company. So uh, no choice, got denied. I just moved on because I got the PPP money. So I'm also going to talk in a minute about what if I, what if I got it with my, with my real estate company like you. So then my seven figure flipping company is more of a kind of marketing company information, uh, mastermind coaching type organization where we help other investors grow their businesses. So that company got approved for a $150,000 idle uh, loan. So this economic injury disaster loan, $150,000. And what I did was I said, well, I got the PPP. I'm going to do some research. So I went into my portal. I looked at it. I was approved for $150,000. And I said, I'm going to go do some research for a couple of days and get all this information and then decide. Because remember, it's supposed to be used for payroll, 
It's supposed to be used for um, expenses like that. It's not supposed to be used to grow your business if you're not having an economic problem right now. Or think about, I could potentially have a problem in Q2, Q3, Q4 coming up. Then, um, then I might... I might start to need it, right? So what am I going to use it for? And at that same time, the PPP, pro, the PPP was going from eight weeks to 24 weeks of covered costs. And so that's still in the works right now. If you watch the other video, I talk about that. So I started to question whether I should take it or not. And I, I took two days to think about it. And then I went back into my portal and I noticed it went from $150,000 to $20,000. So they immediately took $130,000 away from me because I didn't make a decision right there. So they, put a pin in that for a second because I think that's a big key if you've got approved for 150,000. I'll tell you my recommendation here in a minute. So right now I'm sitting on $20,000. I decided for seven figure flipping not to take it. It doesn't make sense. We've got some PPP money. We are moving forward. I'm confident with where we're going. Uh, I, I feel like the payroll is covered with PPP. I don't want to attach my, some of my business assets and things like that to a, a loan with the SBA. I'm not sure what's going to happen going forward. I don't know what kind of the regulations and rules are all changing on a regular basis. $20,000 to me just wasn't um, enough, even $150,000. Initially, I would say, okay, I'll take this loan. It's low interest, 3.75% for 30 years, right? With deferred payments in the beginning. So I said, well, that's like free money for us as real estate investors, right? But in that business, it just doesn't make sense for me to take because I don't need the loan. So let's say uh, I did get it in Blackjack Real Estate, my real estate company just like yours. So I got 150,000. My recommendation is if you've got a loan in your portal right now, is don't wait and just accept it. Like say that yes, because you, you have time to read the documents, the loan documents and the paperwork. So what I did was I didn't accept it and I went and read all the documents, loan paperwork and decided I wasn't gonna take it. Went back in there and then they did the takeaway. They took 130,000 away from me. You don't want that to happen to you if you go two, three days and then decide that you do want to take it and it's gone. So right when you get it, accept it. I, I believe you have 30 days to review the documents, see, see what it's like and sign the paperwork and then you'll get the money. So we have some people in our mastermind group who have gotten the money. Um, we also have some who have accepted it and then are reviewing and determining whether they're going to take it or not. So what's my recommendation? If you don't need it, don't take it. If you need it, you're going to use it. You see some economic uh, injury in the, in the business. You, you're projecting possibly some lower revenues and forecasting in Q3 and Q4, and, but you might not be ready to use it right now for what's required to use it for, payroll costs, expense, thing, like, things like that. Like A lot of the stuff that's included in the Paycheck Protection Program. My recommendation is you accept it, you take your time to review the documents, see how your business unfolds, and then if you do take it, is get the $150,000, put it aside, and then just determine whether you need it for economic injury in your business and can defend that moving forward, and then use it. So if not, just pay the, pay the loan back. Pay the $150,000 back after a month, two months, three months, and, and pay it back. So that's my recommendation. Um, a lot of people have asked, like, if we're buying and selling houses, it kind of reads the fact... The, the current documentation that I read reads to the fact that they're going to put... Um, like they're going to look at assets like my, my uh, depreciable assets like computers and, and office equipment and, and printers and fax machines and stuff like that as opposed to like tangible like real assets like the houses. So um, I don't think right now that it doesn't read to me. And remember, I'm not an attorney. I'm not a CPA. This is a, just a layman guy reading the, um, reading the application and the, the terms and small print that they're going to necessarily like attach it to all of your real estate. But if they, I don't think they have the capability to do that now, but they could in three months, six months, nine months. And so we move property so fast in and out of our business. One thing you don't want to do is have to go to the SBA and say, Hey, I'm selling this house. Can you give me approval to release a lien? If they start leaning properties, it doesn't look like that's what they're going to be doing right now, but who knows what's going to happen moving forward. So that's my, uh, my caution to you. And if you're in a place where you need the $150,000, they're not leaning properties now and they do in a year when they start catching up, then you'll probably have it paid back or be in a place where you can pay it off. So the only thing that I say is read the fine print, read the document, determine what you think you need in your business to move forward. And are you having an economic struggle or injury? Or could you be in the next few months or the next couple quarters? And so plan for that. And then if it's in your bank account, put it in there. It's low interest. And it's almost like a line of credit that you can then pay back. It's just take that 150 and pay it back. So 
Don't wait to, to accept it because it's going to go down really fast. I, I'm living proof of that. And then determine, like, read the fine print, read the documents, comment here, ask questions, comment, you know, ask questions in our uh, Facebook group, the Seven Figure House Flipping and Wholesaling Facebook group, and uh, say, hey, what do you guys think? Who's, who's doing it? So there's a lot of people reaching out right now, say, should I take it or shouldn't I take it? If you're on the fence and you read the fine print, you read it, you're willing to accept it, like, I would say take it, put it in a bank account, put it on the side. I wouldn't spend it. I wouldn't, don't use it to try to, don't use it to do all the things that they're saying you can't use it for. Don't use it to, to grow your revenue, to grow your business, to, to, to bring on more people and, 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 and expand into new markets and stuff like that. It's obvious that that is not the goal of this, right? Follow the rules, do what you're supposed to do and you'll be fine. But take it, put it aside. If you don't have any ec economic uh, injury, what, I, what I'd hate to see is that a bunch of real estate investors got audited down the road like a year or two, three years from now, didn't use it the way they should have used it. They used it to uh, broker money out or grow their business or something like that. And it's obvious. And um, they, there's some sort of penalty or something. But that's, uh, that's my recommendation. Don't wait to accept it, then review the terms. If you do take it and you don't need it right now, but you think you might need it in the future, put it in a bank account. Uh, put it on the side, don't use it, and be ready to pay it back if these, these things change. If Congress and the Senate and the President and, all, and SBA come up with all these different guidelines, more information is going to come out. I've been waiting to make this video, but there's so many people that are asking, should I use it or not? So that's me. I didn't take any of the idle. Um, I have a PPP in both companies, and it worked out well for me. So that's, uh, that's what I've got. Hopefully it helps. See you guys. Bye. Oh, if you want to find out any more information about us or what we do, you can go to sevenfigureflipping.com. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, um, share it with anybody who might need an answer like this or is in the real estate business. And we're also doing this series, uh, Seven Day Flip with Tyler Jensen. He's flipping four houses in seven days. We're documenting it right here on our Seven Figure Flipping YouTube channel. Like, it's like a documentary, a TV show. It comes out every Monday night at eight o'clock uh, Central Time and we stream it live. So make sure you check that out. If, uh, if it's interesting for you, if you watch HGTV or you're a real estate investor, you're going to love it. So um, check us out here, sevenfigureflipping.com, right here on our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope it helps. If it did, leave me a comment, uh, like the video, just tell me what you think, and if there's any other videos that I can make or can share with you, I'd be happy to. See you. Bye.